Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The Tour de l'Avenir is a very prestigious under 23 race and translates the Tour of the Future and was created back in 1961. But since 2007, it has been exclusively open for riders who are 23 years old or younger. And therefore, it has been the place to look for the superstars of tomorrow. So we thought in today's video, we would look back at what happened exactly to the seven last winners of the Tour de l'Avenir. And of course, there were no winners in 2020 as the race was cancelled. Anyways, first on our list is the 2013 edition and this was won by Spain's Ruben Fernandez, who won the edition in front of Simon Yates and Patrick Conrad. Furthermore, a young Julian Philippe won the final stage as well that year. Following on his Tour de l'Avenir victory, Ruben Fernandez joined movie star from Cara Rual. Fernandez's career has not quite lived up to the same levels that some of the other riders on this list have achieved. He has had plenty of top 10 GC finishes in several one-week stage races and he joined Cofidis for the 2021 season and thus far he managed to finish ninth in the UAE Tour in the 2021 edition. So potentially Ruben Fernandez can garner some success for himself at the French squad in the years to come. Anyways, moving on to the 2014 edition and the 2014 winner on this occasion was another Colombian star following in the fruitful footsteps of the 2010 winner Nairo Quintana and of course Esteban Chavez the 2011 winner as well. Miguel Angelovis took the stage win and finished 30 seconds ahead of Robert Power of Australia and the top 10 also included the future 2020 Giro d'Italia winner Theo Gegenhardt. For the following year, Miguel Angelopez signed with Astana and in his first season he managed to finish 7th in the Tour de Suisse and take a stage win in the Vuelta a Burgos. The highlight of his second season with Astana was winning the Tour de Suisse 12 seconds ahead of Ion Izaguirre and another former Tour de Leo and Vineo winner as well, Warren Bagui. In turn, Miguel Angel Lopez was also the second youngest winner of the race behind Roman Kroesinger. In the 2018 edition, Miguel Angel Lopez managed to podium both the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta España in the same year, and in 2019, he managed to finish within the top seven in both of them again, but moreover, he also won the Volta a Catalunya. And in 2020, the Colombian star made his Tour de France debut. He impressed by winning the Queen stage, finishing up the Col de la Loz in front of a roaring Primoz Roglic and also looked like he would complete his Grand Tour podium hat-trick but unfortunately he lost a lot of time on the penultimate stage which incidentally was the time trial up to La Plage de Belfi. For the 2021 season he changed to movie star and we wait to see if Superman Lopez can garner the same height he did at Astana. Thus far he has managed to win the Momon 2 challenge and of course the Route de la Sol. Moving on to 2015 and here we had Spain with Win once again and that was with Marc Soler who actually already had a contract with Movistar and won ahead of Jack Haig and Matiev Mamaikin. Since his win Marc Soler managed to win the 2018 Paris-Nice and also take a stage win in the 2020 Vuelta España and he also has taken a win in the 2021 season in the Tour de Romandie. Soler has shown glimpses of being a GC rider by finishing impressively ninth place in the Vuelta España but he hasn't been as consistent as you would have hoped and this is why Enrique Mas and the other Tour de l'Avenir winner Miguel Angel Lopez were brought to the movie star team as well but we'll have to see what Marc Soler can do now he's moved to UAE Team Emirates for the 2022 season. The 2016 edition of the Tour de l'Avenir is the last time we had a French winner and the French winner here was David Godou who became the first French winner since 2012 when Warren Bagui took the top step of the podium and Godou also won a stage in Tinia along the way and also looking at the top 10 there are plenty of current big names who were part of that race as well which just really showed the level of David Goudou. Unsurprisingly David Goudou signed with FDJ and in his first full season he managed to win a stage at the Tour de Lang and finished behind teammate Thibaut Pino plus he was also fifth in the Milano Torino Classic ahead of teammate Pino as well. Goudou had a good 2019 season finishing third in in UAE, 6th in liege Bastogne, liege 5th in Tour de Romandy, including a stage winner, stage 3, and he managed to finish 13th in the Tour de France, despite supporting Pinot for most of the race. In 2020, his best showing came in the Vuelta España, where Godou managed to win on both stage 11 and stage 17, up to Alto de la Covatil, and he secured a 
eighth overall. And again in 2021, it seemed he is starting to leave Pinot's shadow, winning the Fon Adek Classic as well as finishing fifth in the Tour of the Basque Country and winning the final stage. Plus, he finished on the podium in Liège, Bastien Liège. And unfortunately, in the Tour de France, he had a bit of an unlucky situation on moment two, but he still managed to finish 11th overall. But of course, we all know what David Godou can do, and we will look to this Frenchman for a very exciting future. The 2017 Tour de l'Avenir saw another Colombian winner, and this was Egan Bernal, who was actually riding for Adriano Giacatelli as well, the pro continental team, and he sealed the win by winning stage seven and eight, and as a result, finished ahead of the now late but super talented Bjorn Lamprecht and of course Denmark's Niklas E. From there the world opened up to Egan Bernal, he signed with Team Sky and his world tour career was off. He managed in his first year to win the Tour of Colombia, finished second in the Tour de Romandy after beating Primoz Roglic on an uphill time trial and he even went on to win the overall at the Tour of California. He also made his Tour de France debut as a result and managed to help his two team leaders Geraint Thomas and Chris Froome to seal their podium spots in Paris. But the year of Bernal didn't take long to come and that was in 2019 he managed to win the famous race to the sun Paris Nice ahead of countryman Nairo Quintana along with that he finished on the podium of the Volta a Catalunya and in his Tour de France preparations he managed to win the Tour de Suisse ahead of Rowan Dennis. In the Tour de France Bernal maintained a strong position in the GC and on the 19th stage overtook the yellow jersey on a very strange day to Tigne and he went on to take the Tour de France title becoming the first ever Colombian in history to winning the Grand Boucle. Egan Bernal rounded out the year by winning the Grand Piemonte and also finished third on the Il Lombardia podium. 2020 didn't live up to the same glory that we saw in 2019 for Egan Bernal and this was largely due to what he said was a back injury that he was suffering from. Egan Bernal took the win at La Route de Occitaine but didn't manage to defend his Tour de France title and he did not start on stage 17 unfortunately. 2021 looked to be the year of Bernal once again. The former mountain biker impressed in his first Strada Bianchi finishing third overall only being distanced on the final incline by Macho van der Poel. Equally Egan Bernal continued his debut of Italian races by attending his first ever Giro d'Italia and he went on to win it in imperial Spanish winning two stages along the way and of course course you can hear the whole version of his win in our video voiced by Ewan. So now Egan Bernal is looking to complete his Grand Tour hat-trick winning all three Grand Tours and that's of course a feat that has never been completed by a Colombian and we wait to see what this superstar can do in the years to come. Moving on to the 2018 Tour de l'Avenir and this was of course won by the superstar Tadej Bogacar who uncharacteristically didn't win a stage in his triumph at the Tour de l'Avenir but rode strong in the the mountains to seal the overall win. He finished on the podium ahead of Taiman Arendtman and Gino Meada. But in that top 10, we also had Alexander Blazov, Ivan Souza, and Joao Almeida. So it was definitely a strong year. Following Tare Pogacar's success, he signed with UAE Team Emirates. Big things were expected, and we must say he did surpass them. He didn't wait long for his first race victory as he won his second ever stage race as a pro, the Walter Algarve, after winning up to Hoya. Pogacar went to the Tour of California as well, similar to Egan Bernal, and similar to Egan Bernal as well, won the race after a stage win on Mount Baldy, and in the process, he became the youngest winner of the race, surpassing Bernal's record the year before. Pogacar went to his first Grand Tour in the form of the Vuelta a España and there he managed to win three stages emphatically. On top of that he also finished third overall on the podium behind the winner and rival in the making Primoz Roglic and of course the world champion Alejandro Valverde. Tare Pogacar's stock kept rising in the 2020 season where he managed to win the Vuelta a Comencia Valenciana and finished second in the UAE Tour taking a stage win as well along the way. Then after the lockdown he managed to finish second in the national road race but managed to beat Primoz Roglic in the Slovenian national time trial championships but the highlight of that season of course was his first Tour de France appearance and here the Slovenian was electric when on stage 9 he managed to win and on stage 15 he also took the win of the Grand Colombier but the highlight, of course, was when he won that absolutely emphatic stage up to La Plage de Belfi, the time trial, where he ripped the yellow jersey off the back of Primoz Roglic and shocked 
the world completely as well in the process. He also ended his season with a dramatic podium finish in Liège Bastard Liège and in the 2021 season Tare Pogaccia seemed to right all the wrongs of 2020 as he managed to win the UAE tour after recording the fastest time of the Jabil Hafiq climb. He also won the role at Trena Adriatico after the fastest time in history of the Pranto de Thibault climb and in the Tour de Basque Country he managed to take a stage win and finish third overall after some incredible riding from Roglic and also a slight tactical error by UAE. Tadej Pogacar also managed to claim his first monument win after winning Liège Bastien Liège in a very elite group sprinting to the win ahead of Julien Philippe and he also took his home tour the tour of Slovenia in an emphatic win that of course we covered on the channel but of course the highlight was that he managed to take his second Tour de France win with a very superb performance and again taking the yellow, the polka dot and the white jersey once again along with three stage wins and including a flat time trial. He also went to the Olympics and picked up a bronze medal in the road race for his troubles. So Tare Bogacha definitely one to watch and, and potentially the new GOAT of cycling. Moving on to the 2019 Tour de l'Avenir which was of course the last Tour de l'Avenir before the one we had this year. Tobias Voss was the winner and he rode the Tour de l'Avenir for a third time in a row and on this occasion he was the strongest and most consistent rider in the mountains and as a result he signed with Jombo Visma. In the following season he started riding for his new team but was hampered by the, the lockdown and injury as well so we couldn't see the full potential from the Norwegian but he did manage to take part in our lockdown interview series and of course make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Tobias managed to bag a top five finish in the Tour of Hungary and also take part in his first Grand Tour debut finishing fifth on the opening stage in the 2020 season. Foss has been looking strong in the 2021 season finishing 15th in the Trenio Adriatico and also he was fourth on the opening stage in the Tour of the Basque Country where Jean Bovisma dominated the podium. So for sure this young Norwegian is well on his way to becoming a strong rider and a star of the future and he demonstrated that in the 2021 Giro d'Italia by finishing ninth overall and Foss of course appeared on the channel discussing just that how he did in the Giro d'Italia. He also went on to win both the national road race and the national time trial for Norway so what a feat from the rider and we'll see what he can do in the future to come. That's it for this video of course Norway have taken the Tour de l'Avenir once again in 2021 and it looks like it's going to be domination from the Scandinavian countries for a few years on the world tour so that's great to see and we look forward to that and of course make sure to let us know who you think has been the biggest star of the Tour de l'Avenir winners please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you've enjoyed the video and of course thank you for watching and have a nice day